Hello guys, welcome to the channel, Bob here, um, I'm back in my, I don't know if anyone, if, if you're aware, but I'm actually in my garage, it's like a converted, kind of converted garage, and that's why there's like, um, that's why there is cardboard on the window and stuff like that, to block out the light, I should, I should kind of black it out with some paint, but I haven't got around to doing that, so yeah. So that's why I've got cardboard up the window. <laughs> but this is this is my garage that you see here. And uh it's got a bit more to it than you can see in the in the in the video. Maybe I should uh do a bit of a tour one day. I don't know if people give a toss about those kind of things, but yeah, maybe I can do. But anyway, um this is another vlog. I've got quite a lot to talk about today. Um first of all I'll mention that the video I did yesterday, um about internet relationships and that kind of thing. Um, I kind of made that video when I was quite, I was pretty, pretty angry yesterday. Didn't come across in the video, but I was kind of pretty, I was fuming all day about it. And um, yeah, and it made me feel crap as well. Uh, sick into the bargain, which was, yeah, which was a bit, bit rubbish, particularly when like, my wife comes home from work and I'm like, oh, I feel sick, you know. <laughs> but, but yeah, but I did, um, but I'm kind of just leaving that behind now. I did I did turn comments off on that video, not because of anyone's particular comment, but just because I had my rant, you know, and uh, I just wanted to leave it at that and and move on. These things happen on on the on the internet, you know, and uh, I guess you kind of got to learn to deal with them better. I think in future it's a case of block, ignore, bosh, carry on, block, ignore, bosh. That's <laughs> that's my motto uh, in future. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, you kind of want everything to be like a fairy tale on the channel, you know, it's, um, or I don't anyway, if I'm playing a game and someone's got something constructive to say about it, then please say it because it will help me, it will help the videos because in the future I'll do a video and I'll think, oh, you know, Tom Jones said this, so I can implement that. And uh, but also about the videos as well. If you've got any ideas about the videos and things you think that might make them better, then again, please let me know. I know some people have mentioned the volume, but I have to be honest. Like when I when I watch the videos back and I watch them on YouTube, the volume seems okay on the mic. Um, I've got everything turned up, so I'm not quite sure what else I can do or if I'm doing something wrong. So if you continue to have sound problems, let me know, um, and I'll I'll have a look into it. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we'll see what we can do. But yeah, but but as I said, I mean, if anyone's got any, anything constructive to say, even if it's a criticism, then that's fine. I've got no problem with that, um, as long as we all do it in the right way. You know, that's the uh, that's the way to that's the way to do it. But anyway, moving on from that, we've got some. I've kind of got some. First of all, I've got to say I've had a hair crisis. <laughs> I'm also wearing some strange glasses. I've got hair. I had a hair crisis because. Um, I, my beard kind of got to a length where I quite liked it, and um, I decided to trim it, basically. But I've had a couple of issues with trimming it in the past. I don't have the right tools, really. And I tried to trim it, and basically I made a mistake, and I could have I could have just left it and had no beard on one side, and, you know. So I, I was like, oh, god damn, you know. So I just kind of shaved it all off, essentially. Or I shaved it right down to what you can see. Uh, but it means I've got to start growing it again now. And it's a bit of a. I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure any any got big beards. How do you manage them? You just leave them. I should just leave it. You know, if I never, if I never went out, and I just, I just, uh, I just spoke to my family. I would just leave it. You know, because I'm not. I mean, I like beards, and I'm not. Whoops, I'm not bothered by um, mucking about with it too much. But when you've got to go out into the the, the world, the real life, as it were, it, it's best not to look like a. Uh, yeah, a uh, street drunk. I guess probably is the. <laughs> It's the uh, although I've met some really lovely street drunk, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't bother me honestly if I just left it and didn't do anything with it. Just go the full Gandalf, you know. That's that's the way to go. Um, well, the Gandalf must must trim his beard as well. I don't know. Maybe he's magic. Maybe it's a magic beard. Who knows? So yeah. So so that's where the hair's gone. But that'll be growing back hopefully quite soon. Um, I've got these glasses. I don't know if you can see them. Um, but there, when I first started getting back to using the computer after this crappy illness thing that I've that I've had, um, 
I was finding that I could use it for a short period of time. I was getting headaches. So I, so I kind of read about glasses and stuff that you can get that are supposed to help. Um, and I thought I'd give it a go. And I heard about these. I think these are, what are these ones? What are these glasses called? Gunner. Uh, I looked at them and you can get a prescription Gunner glasses that are supposed to help you when you're using a screen to, to you know, help with eye fatigue. So what I give them a go, but you can get prescription ones, but they're really expensive. And I was like, well, I'm not working. I can't really be doing with that. So I bought a normal pair and I, and I, I bought a pair that were pretty much almost frameless. And I took, the, I took the lenses off and I've kind of, <laughs> I've kind of bodged them up um, over a pair of spare glasses of, of my own that I've got. And they work fine. I can see everything perfectly fine. Everything's got like a, like a darker, like a warmer tint. And since I've been using these, things have been, things have improved. And, I've, and over time, I've been able to use the computer for a longer period of time. Um, I'm not sure if it's if it's like placebo. Maybe if I just went back to use my normal glasses, things would be the same. I don't know, but I've I've carried on using them. And I have to say, my my, my eyes do. I mean, I know people say you should use like um, there's like a program that cuts out blue light. I can't remember what it's called. And, I, and I've used that as well. But I have found that for whatever reason, whether it's working really or not the glasses my eyes feel comfortable when i'm looking at a screen with these glasses so i keep knocking the mic i'm sorry it's rubbish um yeah so i've been using them and they've been fine um and they seem to help my, my eyes do feel more relaxed when i'm when i'm using them the important thing of course is to get up and after an hour or so get up and go outside and focus your vision on something else so you know so that um so that uh kind of yeah relaxes your eyes a bit and just changes your vision changes the muscles that are being used uh, so they don't get stuck in, in 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 one kind of you know one one did looking at one distance for a long period of time i've read that's quite quite important i just realized i'm sitting here i've got like a blanket and stuff <laughs> yeah i've got a door open it's not particularly cold today but i just like to feel like comfortable and you know comforted um i've got a blanket on my legs as well just, what the hell's going on i'm just i'm 45 next month now 45 in December and uh, yeah I'm starting to starting to feel it um, but that's that yeah that that's uh, that's the beard stuff which is obviously the most important thing in the whole video um, what else we got to talk about well the, the start I'm going to talk about Star Wars the Star Wars trailer I was like blown away by it personally um, I don't know it's, I don't know it's kind of easy to jump on bandwagons and things when when a new trailer comes out for something that's quite dear to you but I saw it and it was, it was quite emotional. It's quite an emotional kind of ride, um, and I think it's because I think it's because along with Lord of the Rings, you know, Star Wars was was that other thing that, you know, when you're growing up. I mean, I mean, I grew up with Star Wars, um, and I saw Empire Strikes Back at the cinema, and I'll never forget it because there were. I don't know how. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm not imagining this, and I don't know how they worked out with health and safety, but there were people sitting on the stairs because there weren't enough seats and it was just uh just an amazing experience um i guess maybe they didn't care about health and safety back in those days it wasn't such a big thing but it was an amazing experience and and the trailer for me is, is a mix of it's a it's a it's a, a mix of the older feel like the, the new hope empire strikes back kind of feeling uh mixed with a bit, a bit of modern so i think they've kind of got it absolutely right <coughs> um and it just, yeah, I mean, I know that they trailers are designed to be, you know, to get you going, even for the worst films. But yeah, for a for a, for a really old Star Wars head, um, it was just just amazing. Uh, characters look good. Uh, John Boy Boyega, Boyaga, who was in Attack the Block, which is a film that I really like. Um, it's good to see him in it, and it's good to see a, a black actor in a prominent role in a in a film like this. You know, I don't think that you. I don't think that you often see that, um, but but that's certainly something that should be should be more. Uh, but the other thing as well is that the other lead character is a female, so it's really interesting. Um, and she looks gorgeous. Don't know her name, but she looks great. Uh, there was like a Twitter thing where someone put a video up of her watching the um, watching the trailer for the first time and just uh, just bursting into tears, <clears throat> and that was uh, that was pretty cool. Because I think it's her first film. I think she's like a newcomer. So she looked great, uh, strong character, which is good. Um, the baddie looks good. Is it Rilo? No. Something Ren. 
Kylo Ren or or whatnot. Um, there's some people saying that he's kind of like he might be Luke Skywalker, but I can't see that. I just don't see that actually. I thought Luke Skywalker was actually he's actually in the trailer. He was in an earlier trailer where he was talking about the Force, um, and in this one you see someone with a Force hand put their put their hand on R two D two. So I'm assuming that's Luke Skywalker. Um, and Carlo Ren, we know the actor who's playing him. So yeah, I don't see how that how that would work. But that looked pretty good. Harrison Ford hamming it up, <laughs> looking thoroughly just, you know, am I really saying these lines kind of thing going on? But he's good. I love him. You know, he's he's just got that. Yeah, let's just get this over with kind of thing. Um, the Millennium Falcon. Oh wow. The Tie Fighters flying around. I love the bit at the beginning where it appears as though she's. Um, I guess, I guess she's kind of. There's a bit where she's kind of working on something and she looks at the spaceship flying off. And I, I guess she's salvaging in a Star Destroyer that's crashed on the ground, which I thought was really good. Um, yeah, the bad guy looks great. The red lightsaber with the, like the sword, like with the with the, the blade, the, um, the the hilt. Is it the hilt? The whole thing's a hilt, isn't it? But that, but the bits on the hilt that stick out. Um, they're like red as well, so it's like a sword, proper sword. That was just uh, that was amazing. All the effects look great, pretty organic, which I think is good. You know, it didn't look too artificial. Um, I like the X-wing Tie Fighter fights over the planet, like closer to the surface, because I think in Star Wars most of the space combat's always been in space, but it's quite an interesting that it looks really good. Um, what else did we have? You got the Darth Vader's uh, melted mask. I don't know where he got that from. Hopefully they'll go into that how he retrieves that that'll be that'll be pretty good um what else did we have there all sorts of stuff going on you know a bit a bit of um bit of carrie fisher at the end uh which was really really good uh, it just looks great i'm really excited for it and and at the end also where john boyega kind of has got the white lightsaber and kylo ren comes in and goes you know fires he's up and goes in for the attack it's quite interesting because i didn't think that boyega was going to be a jedi I thought it was going to be the woman. But now I think about it, he looked most uncomfortable with the lightsaber. Particularly when when Kylo Ren goes in to attack him. And he's like, oh my god, you know, what what do I do? So I don't know if he's, I don't know if that's kind of like a bit of a red herring. And you're supposed to think he's Jedi, but he's not. So it will be, I know he's a new Jedi, but he didn't look comfortable in the part. And like a... Looking that awkward and fighting, obviously, like a badass, because he does look like a badass. Uh, yeah, looked a bit, looked a bit weird. You also had like a big chunky stormtrooper with a big gun. There was a scene. Um, I'm not sure uh, if he's going to be like a, a secondary baddie, you know, like a general or something or whatever. The it's interesting because the um, the Empire didn't seem to didn't seem to really have any any. I say human, obviously, like Kylo Ren's human. He's just wearing a mask, but. I didn't seem to have any. Um, I didn't have, I didn't have a human face that you saw. You know, it's all masks and helmets and things. So that was quite quite interesting. But yeah, really looking forward to that. That's going to be pretty cool. And while we're talking about those kind of things, we also myself and my wife, wife also watched a program started on the BBC called Last Kingdom, which is a bit. Um, if you like Game of Thrones, I think you probably uh, you probably like this. It's about the. Um, it's about the Viking invasion of, of England, essentially. And that was that was really good. Really like that. So looking forward to that. I'm not sure if you get that in the US. But if you get a chance to watch the first episode of Last Kingdom, give it a go. Um, I know this is not gaming related, but wow, I just talk about anything really, can't we? You know, it's um, Doctor Who. Oh, Doctor Who. What, what's, what's going on? Um... I'm, I'm kind of like a, I'm kind of like an old school Doctor Who fan, really. Um, I I like I, for me Doctor Who. I like the I like the kind of the weird abstract kind of complication that you, you would get in the stories and the fact that the stories would go over a period of t a period of episodes. Um, I've got a number of Tom Baker DVDs. And uh, I kind of watch them every now and again, and um, yeah, there's something about them. I don't, it's not a nostalgia thing because I watch them and I still really enjoy them. And I watch the new Doctor Who's and I quite like them. I mean, Peter, Peter Capaldi's an excellent choice for Doctor Who, a great actor. 
Um, but there's just something about them. I guess they've, I guess they've kind of, I guess they've, I guess they've modernised them for, for a new audience. You know, while still trying to keep the old audience. But it, it's odd. I mean, I think, I think what I'm, I think the thing that I'm, it seems to have gone away less this time. But some of the older series, of Do- some of the the older series of the newer Doctor Who's, a lot of them have taken place on on Earth, and I find that a bit boring, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, like. Tom Baker stuff like the Ark in Space and that kind of thing, you know. I mean, that's that's where Doctor Who takes his assistant somewhere else off the Earth. You know, if I wanted to watch the Earth, you know, if I wanted to watch what's really going on on the planet, I know, I know, I know obviously, obviously, the stories are not really what's going on on the planet, but I, I you know, I, I like to see. The, I prefer the stuff that's based off of the Earth. You can get some great stuff on on the. Um, you can get some great stuff based on the Earth. You know, but but it, it was it seemed to be too much for me. It was more geared towards that. This did the, the Peter Capaldi stuff seems to be a bit different. Um. So so yeah, I mean, I like him as an actor, but there's something about the new stuff I just can't get my head around. It all seems a bit like the first the first two episodes about the about Davros coming back. It was weird. It all just seemed a bit. It, it all seems a bit messy. Um. There isn't like a flow to it. It's really weird. It's difficult to explain. But I remember the first the first episode of the new series where where Davros is in it. In a very short, there was very little build up in a very short space of time. Um, the Doctor seems to have been kidnapped by. Well, they seemed to have met the Daleks, and it was all sort of you know, it was all going on. There was very little kind of build up and introduction to that, and then it kind of just seemed to go along at a bit of a pace, and it was a bit a bit of a mess. Yeah. Maybe it's because they try to. Maybe it's because they're trying to fit too much into a small amount of episodes. I think because I, th- I think nowadays people seem to be under the impression that everyone wants quick stuff, quick snappy stuff, and it's and it's done. And maybe that's what the 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 the, the, the more current um, audience want. I, I really don't know. Um, well, I don't personally. I'd like I like a story to develop over a, a number of episodes, but they. That doesn't seem to get the chance in in the uh, in the newer Doctor Who's, but yeah, it's weird. I can't put a finger on why I'm not so keen on it, but um, yeah, we'll have to see. But I love Peter Capaldi, and I watch kind of watch it for him. Really, he's uh, he's really really good. And the the last kind of two part, it wasn't so bad. Um, the one with the alien spaceship that was kind of bringing back the, it was kind of bringing back the transmissions of people that it had killed. To, to time to kind of send a message to to bring it back to life or open up its kind of casket or something um yeah that 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 wasn't bad i have to say that i haven't watched the recent two parter and the reason for that i don't know if you're getting it in america but the reason for that is that at the moment it seems to be that these these culturally popular programs um you watch the trailer and you go i know that face and then you think ah Game of Thrones actor, you know. I mean, they're trying. They seem to be trying to shoehorn a Game of Thrones actor in everything. And I understand that Game of Thrones is really popular, and people will go, "Oh, look, that, that, she's from Game of Thrones. I'm going to watch that," you know. But it, it just it just feels real, real cynical, you know. Just really, oh, Jesus, you know. It makes me. I just go like that, just like slap my bald head, put my head in my in my hands, you know. And um, and I'm sure it's good, and I'm sure that they're all they're all fine actors. But the problem is, is when you get when you get like a, a Game of Thrones type phenomena, you then see all the actors appearing in films and TV, and I do find it a bit. It all just feels a bit cynical, really, because you kind of know that they probably wouldn't be in it if it wasn't for that, you know. Um, but then I guess that's what celebrity is all about, isn't it? Really. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it's like in on in in the US, but in in the uh, myself and my wife generally only watch BBC. Um, but even BBC is quite insular and um, um, quite incestuous. You know, you've got if the BBC BBC come up with a new program, whether it's a game show or whatever it may be, nine times out of ten you will find that that will be hosted by a small stable of people that are always on the BBC. And it's like oh, it's that person again. I mean, is, you know, is there no new talent coming through that that you can watch? You know, you must have. You must have. There must be new people who it'd be good to give a chance to to come into the industry and do stuff. But it's the same old, same old thing. You know, any variety show, game show, they're all um, 
and they're all hosted and presented by a very small stable of people and, it, and it's uh, strange even the BBC where we pay them god knows how much every year to watch um, saying that programs are very good <laughs> generally uh, BBC News is a bit rubbish I have to say it's become a bit like Fox News not as bad not as kind of right wing but certainly the way they're pre the way they've been presenting the um the way they've been presenting the uh you know the the uh the kind of refugee situation in in uh in Europe and some of the way they portray the um you know the the kind of muslim muslim extremists isis that kind of thing of you know I haven't been too impressed with it, but generally the bbc is really good i'm not sure if you've got an equivalent i'm not sure if you've got like a traditional like old fashioned it's not old fashioned now i guess but i'm not sure if the us has like a traditional network or station that has, has come through from over a period of you know 60 50 60 years or whatever and it's kind of like a staple that everyone goes to I imagine in the us you've got so much choice from a channel point of view uh and obviously we've got satellite tv and cable tv here but i still don't think we've got the choice that you've got you know the sheer scale of channels that you uh, that you have hmm, not sure but anyway let's, let's get on to games let's do some game stuff beginner's guide I don't know what to say nothing to say <laughs> about it really um other than what i said in the video uh, a couple of people have said to me that they and i think someone put a message up saying that they feel that um coder is a real person but it's someone else um i'm still not because of the way it's because of the way it was presented the narrative and the way it all kind of came together too conveniently i'm not convinced that it's uh i'm not convinced that it is a collection of games or levels from a person and he's put them together i kind of think that it, it's a very designed game and that's kind of what the narrative is but i'm not sure it'll be interesting to see what happens when that when that comes uh that comes along uh, i'm really enjoying the ranger stuff in in everquest i have to say i've had a bit of a dip with it not from an interest point of view from a character point of view <laughs> i was like oh no because i i kind of I was talking to someone in game and I kind of um I'd mentioned about wanting to play a tank. <clears throat> when I kicked off the Ranger series, what I before that, I don't know how I got kind of caught up with Ranger, but I think it's because I can't, you know, I'm just a bit of a Ranger uh a bit of a Ranger fanboy. But before that, my plan was to start a paladin because I told you about quite enjoying tanking in a group and having that responsibility. Um and I was going and it was going to be a paladin, but now it's a Ranger and now I'm thinking, well, I do want to group with the character, so what I might do is take a paladin into the same kind of place behind closed doors, and if I'm enjoying it, then kind of carry on the series with with a paladin. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want people to keep. Don't want to muck people about um, <laughs> because I swap and change about enough. It must drive you mad. But um, but the core element, the, the core, the core elements of the series is going to be. Um, uh, starting from scratch with nothing so that's kind of where we're going to be going so yeah so hopefully that will be hope we'll get there that series will carry on because i'm enjoying it and, it and it's nice to experience everquest in that in that way again and also to give some inform informative information and that kind of brings me on to my next topic really with, from a games point of view and that's that um you're gonna notice some differences in the channel over the coming months i think probably um i want to start doing videos I want to start doing videos. I enjoy talking about games, gaming culture, gaming mechanics, um, how games play, why choices in games are made, like, like the narrative, um, you know, the issues with kind of sec sexuality in games, um, with regard to how kind of female characters are portrayed. Any anything gaming, I kind of really enjoy talking about that. So I'd like to um, just start off playing games new and old actually I'll kind of be a mixture and these videos will be a bit more informative about what I think about the game I guess kind of giving more an opinion more of an opinion really which I've kind of avoided before because I think with opinion then comes can come grief because people don't like opinion um, or some people don't you know and uh, but, but I think ultimately and I was talking to having a chat with Dalian about it and the thing the thing is is that I've um 
we, we, we all kind of need to diversify to a certain point of view. I mean, I've decided that I, I mean, I love doing YouTube. And if I was doing it, if I was, if I suddenly get a part time job and I can't do, can't do it full time, which is what I'd like to do, um, I would still produce videos. But it would honestly be like one, one every two, two weeks, one a month, just when I was kind of feeling like it, really. And that would be a shame because I really enjoy doing it. But, but also, I've kind of got to the channel, also, as I said before, I mean, I'd be completely blunt about it. The channel for me now also has to provide something else. Not a huge amount financially. You know, I'm not looking to be um, PewDiePie or any of that sort of nonsense. Um, but it, but it, but I do feel that for me to carry on doing it and to justify, it, as I've said, you know, it needs to be do, it needs to be doing something. So I need to, I need to try and do something to for that to happen. And I'm not going to do anything that I'm not going to enjoy doing, just to make the just to increase the channel kind of you know. Uh, just just to sort of push the channel I'm, I, I would never do that so it's always going to be stuff that um that i, that I want to do but and but i know a lot of you are here for everquest you know and um and i think probably what you'll find is that there will be there won't be any less everquest videos but there will be more other stuff than there is everquest and um and that's kind of how it works really you know you can't you can't we can't do what we want to do just playing EverQuest. I think we need to diversify, bring in a different audience. We bring in that audience that may bring problems of its own. Um, but what I do want to say is that I really do appreciate. <coughs> excuse me. I really do appreciate you watching the other videos that are not EverQuest because that all helps, you know. Um, so yeah, so thanks for that because if you watch those videos, that it all helps. You know, it's. Uh, I know it's not EverQuest. <laughs> keep kind of repeating myself but as i said that's um that's yeah that's kind of what we have to do and uh and it's not you know and the problem is without that i won't be doing everquest videos anyway that's the thing because if i if i can't if i can't reach my fairly kind of modest goals with the channel and with twitch and with patreon then i'll i won't be doing everquest videos you know so it seems to be the choice of just not doing it and chucking out a video very rarely <clears throat> or um or diversifying you know and doing doing different videos different games and stuff and um yeah but we'll see how all that goes i think i've kind of talked myself out um the shopkeep video is quite popular and I'll, i will be playing that but i'll uh i'll kind of show you how the shops get i quite like the whole tying in with fig wall you know but i will um but we will um, we'll be doing some more of that, and that's fine. But I'm going to be covering other games. I think the next one, I think the next video I'm probably going to do to kick off that kind of new style video is going to be Metal Gear Solid Five because <clears throat> I've played that quite a lot now, and I'm quite close to, to the end of the game. Um, I've got an understanding of what it's all about and how I feel about it. So that will probably be my first video where I kind of talk about a game critically, and we'll see how it goes. You know, when it goes up, if you've got any comments on my critique, you know, um, how I'm coming across when I'm doing it, then please, please let me know. That will be, uh, that'll be good information. Um, I do keep, I do still keep thinking about doing, let's change my glasses. <laughs> I do still, still keep thinking about doing more editing. So videos where I've edited some footage together and I'm not playing it, I'm talking over it. I think, I think, I think they can be quite good, those ones. I think they're the sort of, ones that people like <clears throat> generally because it leaves you free to talk about stuff it leaves you free to talk about the game when you're not having to concentrate on playing it which i think is probably going to be a good thing so but i'm rubbish at editing you see uh, i probably need to, to buy myself i don't know if there's a light cheap version of sony vegas and i can um yeah and i can start learning that see how we go but the big game that i'm going to be covering coming up is fallout 4 which is only like less than two weeks away now so that's going to be a game that i'm going to be doing <clears throat> some videos of <clears throat> just talking about the narrative the game mechanics um giving opinions essentially and we'll see we'll see how we go before we go though i do have some stuff to show i've got some bob's tat and this is some everquest stuff you can see it just down there actually like, oh god no now i i used to kind of run a shop i used to have my own shop a few years ago and i sold 
hobby game stuff, mostly like Magic the Gathering, D&D, that kind of stuff. Also the action figures, and I got kind of a series of EverQuest figures in, and they all sold, actually. Or at least I haven't been able to find any of them. Um, but this was one particularly that I kept by because it's got a pet, and I like the pet. So this is what comes in the pack. There's a spider. Uh, I hope you can see that. It comes with a spider, which I'm... It was a bit weird, I have to say. Not quite sure what that was all about. Not sure why the spider's there. I guess we're fighting the spider. I guess that's the thing. Um, now this is this is a dark elf mage. There you go. There we go. Hope you can see that. Okay. And she's carrying a stein, <laughs> which is huge. <laughs> I can't imagine. I think it's. A, I don't know if it's a crude stein or a stein of Magok. It's got that symbol on it. I should have checked up first. I also should have checked to see, tell you what the robe is, because I recognise the robe, but I don't know what it's called. But I'm sure that you guys will... Um, I'm sure you guys will know what that is. <clears throat> so she's a dark elf mage, as you can see. Um, dodgy hair. But the robe's quite nice. Uh, there's a bit of yellow underneath, as you can see. A bit of leg there. Look. A bit of leg and shoe. For those, uh, for those shoe people out there who like a bit of shoe. There we go. But this is the best. This is the best bit about it. Oops! God damn it! And, this is, and it's the Earth Elemental, which is huge. Look at that. And I've that standing on my, on my desk here. That is awesome. And that's, that's definitely been summoned with the focus item, definitely, because it's like massive in comparison to her. It's huge. Look at that. A super duper Earth Elemental. And I do have a. I do have a, a gnome um, magician actually. And I'll do a bit of footage with him now and again because I do, I do, I love, I love the, I do love pets and I love the earth, I love the magician pets in particular, the old school ones. Um, so yeah, at some point I'll do a bit of footage with that, but I'll go somewhere where I haven't been before and we'll, you know, we'll have a muck around. <coughs> um, but that's it for this video. Please come back, you know, uh, subscribe if you want to see me talking about games and you want to see more of this, more of this. Um, I'm on I'm on Twitch, Super Bits and Bob, and Twitch is going to be I think Twitch is going to be a key thing really for, for how things work, and how far this goes I think probably, because so I think Twitch will, Twitch is like another outlet, um, and I think it's it's, and I think the I think the, I think there's more of a kind of a donating culture on Twitch and. Um, and so, you know, I think that might be quite an interesting thing. And I'm going to be very, very soon, maybe this week, but definitely it will be starting next week. I'm going to be nailing down some regular Twitch stuff. So Super Bits and Bob's on Twitch. Super Bits and Bob on Twitch, if you want to follow me. Anyway, it's not all going to be all EverQuest, I'm afraid. You know, that's just how it goes. But there will be a lot of EverQuest, I would imagine. Um, and Facebook. Super Bits and Bob on Facebook. Um, and Patreon. I'm on Patreon, Super Bits and Bob, if you want to donate directly for, for this kind of stuff. Um, anyway, guys, yeah, that's it. That is it for this week. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to be around at the weekend, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll probably have some content over the next few days, and then for the weekend, we're not, I think we're, we're kind of testing my limits at the moment, health-wise. My, son, my son's doing game, my son's doing a, has gone to university in Cambridge and he's doing a game video game kind of design technology course which is really exciting he hasn't been doing it long and already he's been to see like Sony's headset VR headset and all that kind of stuff so I'm really hoping that he gets through that and gets a job in the industry because he's a massive gamer he's so excited for Fallout 4 it's unbelievable I was speaking to him on Skype yesterday and he was like <laughs> I should get him on a video. My old, my eldest son as well. One something like that might be quite fun. <laughs> we play like a co-op game or something. Um, I imagine if I'm talking to him through Skype, then you can hear him, hear him as well. Through yeah, I'm not sure how that works. But yeah, but but we're going up to see him, and we're going to stay in a hotel type thing for a couple of evenings. So I'm kind of really testing my limits of my health at the moment to see how things go. I'm a bit kind of worried about it, but yeah. Looking forward to it as well because we haven't we haven't seen him since he went. It must must be about six eight weeks now. Um, yeah, but we'll be back to normal on Monday. Um, expect to Tuesday today. Expect two or three more videos this week. I would say. 
yeah and that's it and i'll speak to you all soon thanks for watching